<laughs> Hi, I'm Yara. So, you know how they say, as American as apple pie? I was wondering if they say that in other countries too, like the UK, for example. Do you guys say, as British as fish and chips in the UK? Uh... All right, they don't say that. But as much as the Brits celebrate chicken tikka masala as their national dish, watch my friend Sana's video about that in the link below, fish and chips is ostensibly more British. But behind this iconic dish is actually a story of immigration, persecution, and even torture. You know, I was in London a few months ago and actually had a lot of interesting food, like steak and kidney pie, haggis, Yorkshire pudding, scones, or scones, and of course, fish and chips. It was delicious. But what are the origins of this dish? All right, so people have been fishing in the UK for millennia. I mean, it's not that surprising. It is an island which means a lot of fish, like everywhere. But the concept of eating fried fish didn't start there. A lot of research says it actually started in Portugal and Spain <laughs> and was eaten especially by the Sephardic Jews who lived there. Now, because Jews couldn't work or cook on the Sabbath, the holy day, AKA Saturday, many of them would fry fish on Friday and then eat it cold the next day. Eating cold fish on the Sabbath was a Jewish tradition, which is also why gefilte fish is a big tradition among Ashkenazi Jews. Anyway, Jewish cooks were no strangers to frying foods. Mmm, delicious latkes. And so pescado frito, or pescaito frito, was born. Similar to pickling, frying the fish would help it last longer. In fact, sometimes people would fry the fish and then pickle it. That's great. It's supposed to have vinegar on it, so it's just pickle juice instead. Oh, you dipping it again? <laughs> Yeah. But the history of fish and chips is also tied to a story of Jewish persecution. In the late 1400s, the Spanish Inquisition started. That's when the Catholic Church forced Jews and Muslims to convert to Christianity or be tortured and killed. Estimates of the death toll range from 30,000 to 300,000. Many Jews officially converted, but continued practicing their faith in secret. And fried fish allowed them to disguise their identities. When observant Christians in Portugal and Spain avoided meat on holy days like Fridays, Jews blended in with them by eating fish and then ate the leftovers cold the next day on the Sabbath. At the same time, many Jews fled Spain and Portugal to avoid the torture and persecution. They settled in other countries in Europe where Judaism was somewhat more accepted, like the UK. Once there, they continued their tradition of frying fish in their newly adopted homes. But it wasn't just tradition. For some, it became their livelihood. Jewish immigrants in cramped parts of London, like Squalor's Market, often became fried fish sellers. And these neighborhoods became famous for their delicious deep fried fish. It became such a popular way of preparing fish, the most famous English cookbook from that time by Hannah Glass also had a recipe for it. Flour it and dip it in the yolks of eggs and fry it in a great deal of oil till it does have a fine brown. Meanwhile, chips as we know them today were becoming popular around the same time, as in the first half of the 1800s. In fact, the very first written usage of the word chips was in Charles Dickens's Tale of Two Cities. It was the best of fries. It was the worst of fries. Wait, shouldn't we be saying chips? Well, all those chips we all love, they all came from the Americas, most likely Peru. While some sources say the idea of frying potatoes may have come from Belgium or France, it seems that people in the UK may have also figured out that fried potatoes just taste really good. Anyway, there was fried fish and fried chips. But the first time we see a place selling fish and chips together is in the 1860s. There's a dispute over who did it first. Either Joseph Malin, a Jewish Brit of Ashkenazi descent in London, or a man named John Lees near Manchester. But fried fish didn't take off in the rest of the country until a certain technological advancement. Railroads. With the Industrial Revolution came trains, ice boxes, and steam powered boats. And that made it possible to catch and ship fresh fish from the sea throughout the country. And because it was so tasty and cheap, I mean, they used to wrap it in newspapers, it became a popular food with the working class. At one point, there were more than 35,000 fish and chip shops in the UK. Compare that to the 14,000 McDonald's in the US. What's more, during World War II, fish and chips was one of the few foods not rationed by the British government. And since then, it's become a symbol of Britain. And here's what's fascinating. With each new wave of immigrants, comes new fish and chip shop owners of different ethnicities and religious backgrounds. What started with Jewish immigrants was eventually taken up by Italian immigrants, then Cypriots, and then Chinese and South Asian immigrants in the late 20th century. So look, 
Fish and chips is a food that has roots in different parts of the world. It's a new food in a new land that's undergone some changes and was made by a resilient people who fled persecution and made Britain their home. And I mean, in a sense, what's more British than that? Brexit, maybe? <laughs> Okay. <laughs>